Every spring, hundreds of millions of people in northern China wake up to skies that look like something from an apocalypse movie. The air turns orange, visibility drops to nothing, a fine layer of dust settles over entire cities, cars, windows, streets, even inside people's homes. For decades, China has been fighting a war that most of the world knows nothing about. Not a war against another country, but a war against nature itself. The deserts in China's north have been swallowing farmland, burying villages, and forcing millions of people to abandon their homes. The Gobi and the Taklamakan deserts were consuming land at a terrifying pace, and Beijing itself was being threatened by the advancing sands. So China launched one of the most ambitious environmental projects in human history. They decided to build a wall made entirely of trees. Here's how it works. China faces a scale of desertification few countries confront. About 27% of China's land is commonly reported as desertified or degraded, directly affecting hundreds of millions of people. This means hundreds of millions of people live with the consequences of expanding deserts every single day. The situation was getting worse every year. During the 1970s, the deserts were expanding at a rate of about 2,100 square kilometers per year. In past decades, satellite imagery and environmental reports showed parts of the Gobi and other deserts advancing into grassland and farmland, forcing communities to adapt or relocate. That's the equivalent of losing an area the size of London every single year to the desert. The impact on ordinary people was devastating. Crops and buildings were being damaged or destroyed, forcing many people to leave their homes and become climate refugees. These displaced families abandoned land their ancestors had worked for generations. Entire villages disappeared under the dunes. Herders who had lived off the land for centuries suddenly found themselves with no way to make a living. The sandstorms were particularly brutal. During peak season in spring, these fierce storms could occur three to ten times per month, disrupting transportation, damaging crops, and sometimes shutting down entire cities. Beijing used to experience an average of 26 sandy days during the 1950s, with the Gobi Desert's edge creeping ever closer to the capital city. Scientists compared the situation to America's Dust Bowl in the 1930s. The rapid development of China during the early 20th century saw substantial amounts of forest cleared for timber and agricultural land. Overgrazing made matters worse. The livestock population ballooned from 100 million in 1960 to 400 million animals, stripping vegetation faster than the land could recover. Something drastic had to be done, and in 1978, the Chinese government launched what would become the largest environmental engineering project ever attempted. The plan was audacious. China would plant a massive wall of trees across its northern regions to act as a physical barrier against the advancing deserts. The Three North Shelterbelt Forest Program, commonly called the Great Green Wall, began in 1978 with a completion target of 2050. This was a 72-year commitment spanning multiple generations of workers and government administrations. The scale is almost hard to comprehend. When completed, the Green Barrier will span approximately 4,800 kilometers in length and up to 1,450 kilometers in width in certain regions, encompassing around 88 million acres of forest. The project covers 13 provinces and autonomous regions across northern, northwestern, and northeastern China. For comparison, that length is roughly equivalent to the distance from New York to Los Angeles and back again. The Chinese government has invested approximately $7 billion in planting millions of trees along the northern border. The goal was to raise forest cover from around 5% to 15% in the affected regions, creating windbreaks that would slow down dust storms and stabilize the soil before it could blow away. Workers began planting billions of seedlings across some of the harshest terrain on Earth. The green belt is made up of drought-resistant species such as saxules, poplars, red willows, salt cedars, and legumes. These plants were chosen specifically because they could survive in areas with minimal rainfall and extreme temperature swings between scorching summers and freezing winters. The trees serve multiple purposes. They slow the movement of sand dunes and act as windbreaks against dust storms that have been eroding soil and degrading about 2,300 square kilometers of farmland every year. The forests also create new carbon sinks, absorbing substantial amounts of industrial emissions from China's factories. By 2009, China's planted forest covered more than 500,000 square kilometers, increasing tree cover from 12% to 18%. This became the largest artificial forest anywhere in the world. But did it actually work? The numbers tell a remarkable story of environmental transformation. Over decades, as many as 66 billion saplings have been planted under the Great Green Wall Three North Shelterbelt Program. To put that number in perspective, that is roughly eight trees for every single person currently alive on Earth. 
China's total forest coverage climbed from around 10% in 1949 to more than 25% by 2024. The desert expansion has actually reversed in many regions. During the late 20th century, satellite records show parts of the Gobi advancing rapidly into northern grasslands. It has shown signs of stabilizing or even slightly reversing in localized areas, according to multiple long-term monitoring reports. Large tracts of degraded land have been restored or stabilized, reversing decades of damage in several regions. In November 2024, China announced a 3,046-kilometer green belt surrounding the Taklamakan Desert had reached a major development milestone. The Taklamakan covers an area of 337,600 square kilometers, roughly the size of Finland. This single achievement took 46 years of continuous work. The sandstorm frequency dropped significantly. The average number of sandy days in Beijing fell from 26 in the 1950s to just three by 2010. The frequency of sandstorms nationwide fell about one-fifth between 2009 and 2014. Research from Beijing confirms the shelter belts were responsible. The reduction in dust storm intensity can be directly attributed to the wholesale planting of trees in northern China. A 2019 NASA study showed China accounted for approximately 25% of the global increase in greening between 2000 and 2017. Government assessments say a significant portion of treatable desertified land has been stabilized or reforested. But critics have raised serious concerns about whether this success can actually last. Jennifer L. Turner, director of the China Environment Forum at the Woodrow Wilson Center, pointed out a major issue. People plant lots of trees in big ceremonies, but then later no one takes care of them and they die. The spectacle of planting often matters more than the survival of what gets planted. The survival rate of planted trees has been a persistent problem throughout the project's history. In 2008, winter storms destroyed 10% of the new forest stock, leading the World Bank to advise China to focus more on quality rather than quantity. In Ningxia province, more than a billion poplars were lost to disease because low biodiversity plantations made the forests vulnerable to pests. Monoculture planting created forests that looked impressive but collapsed when disease struck. Water consumption is another major concern that scientists have raised repeatedly. Trees planted in arid regions can soak up groundwater that native grasses and shrubs need to survive, causing more soil degradation. Professor Xiang Xue from the Chinese Academy of Sciences noted that crowding trees into natural sand dunes has caused rapid decreases in soil moisture and groundwater tables, which can actually cause desertification in some regions. The solution was creating new problems. Even at current treatment rates, the maths is daunting. By 2011, around 1.7 million square kilometers of land had become desert in China, of which 530,000 square kilometers was treatable. But the 2011 rate of treating 1,717 square kilometers per year, it would take 300 years to reclaim all the treatable land. There is also a problem that China cannot solve alone. Research shows that about half of China's sandstorms originates from dust in Mongolia, where overgrazing and mining have accelerated desertification beyond Chinese borders. The shelter belts reduce dust within their areas, but cannot stop storms originating from neighboring countries. Despite these challenges, China is now combining its tree planting efforts with cutting edge technology that previous generations could never have imagined. Robots capable of drilling holes, planting seedlings, watering and compacting soil can complete the entire process in just five seconds per tree. Drones are being used to plant trees at scale in hard-to-reach areas like the Yangshan Cliffs, while remote sensors monitor forest health in real time and help anticipate emerging risks before they become disasters. Perhaps the most innovative strategy is China's attempt to merge renewable energy with ecological restoration. In the Kubuchi Desert, a massive project dubbed the Solar Great Wall stretches across 400 kilometers of sand dunes. The project plans to install 100 gigawatts of solar capacity by 2030, more than three times what the United States is currently building nationwide. The solar panels serve a dual purpose that makes them incredibly efficient. They can reduce groundwater evaporation by 20 to 30 percent, while providing shade that cuts wind speeds and supports plant growth underneath. Grass and crops now grow beneath the panels, with the livestock grazing in what was once called the Sea of Death. The panels reduce wind speeds at ground level by up to 50 percent, achieving in four years what normally takes a decade of traditional sand fixation work. The Kubuchi project alone is expected to produce 180 billion kilowatt hours annually by 2030, enough to power Beijing and surrounding areas while simultaneously fighting desertification. Former residents who fled the desert are now returning to work in solar plants and farming operations that were once unthinkable a generation ago. 
A UN report acknowledged that the Kubuchi model has created ecological wealth of roughly 500 billion won and lifted 102,000 people out of poverty. China has proven that humans can push back against desertification on a massive scale. But with 26.8% of the country still classified as desert, and climate change intensifying droughts worldwide, the battle is far from over. Now it's your turn to weigh in. Should other countries facing desertification copy China's approach, or are the environmental risks too high? Tell us what you think in the comments below. Like this video if you found it eye-opening, and subscribe so you don't miss our next deep dive.